Hi there, at the time of filming it's the end of 2024 and you may have received a new 3D printer for Christmas, Hanukkah, or just because they're relatively inexpensive now. In this video we're going to go over all the things that you would need to do to get it set up and running and to get your first print out. There's no way that I'm going to be able to cover all of the printers out there. There's dozens of companies, hundreds of different styles of printers. But in general, we're gonna follow the basic steps to get you up and running in all this. Uh, one note though, this is made for FDM, which means that if your printer's using filament, this guide's for you. If you have another style printer, this isn't gonna be very helpful, uh, but hopefully we'll get you going here. All right, so step one here is to unbox and set up your printer. Basically, as I said, there are dozens of companies, hundreds of different styles of printers, if not more, and you need to get your printer set up. Some we're gonna take out of the box, undo a couple of screws, and you're ready to go. Other ones you're gonna to have to build. Just follow your manufacturer's instructions with the included guide, and you should be good to go. Once you've completed and set up your printer, you need to check and see if there's any updates for the software or firmware that it uses. It's not 100% necessary, but it's gonna make sure that you have all the latest bells and whistles ready to go so that your printer can enjoy more features than it might have otherwise. A lot of modern printers have wireless or plug-in connectivity, so you can go ahead and update them through the web. And others, you may have to take a USB stick or an SD card and put it into the side and update it that way. Again, just follow your manufacturer's instructions and you should be good to go. The second step is one of the more fun ones, and that's finding the model to print. Most printers are going to come with a test file that is set and ready to go for that printer. Now, these files generally tend to be already optimized for your printer so that you have a really good experience the first time out. If your printer doesn't have one of these or you want to print something different, take a look at these websites and you can download anything. We'll go over that more in just a moment here. My personal suggestion is the one that I always do. It's called the 3D Benchy. It's kind of the standard. It may not be the best print in the world, but it's a fun one. It's a little boat and it gives you a lot of ideas about how your printer's operating, how everything that kind of makes it work. How well it's working. There's a link down below if you want to download that file. All right, so we have the printer and now we have a file. Now we need to be able to have it be read by the printer and that's going to be step three. So the great thing about 3D printing is that you can print anything that you can design or download. The problem is that 3D file isn't ready for the printer. It needs to go through what's called slicing. Basically your computer is going to slice up that file into a bunch of little lines and that's going to change it over into code, a language that the printer can read. There's going to be a lot of technical things here, but in general, what we're doing is we're going to take that model, slice it into little layers, uh, and then that's going to convert it over to code that can be read by the printer to control how fast the motors go, how fast the fans go, how fast the plastic is getting pulled out of the extruder. It covers all those things. And the slicing software is going to take care of all of that for you, so you don't have to write thousands and thousands of lines of code for the computer to read out what the printer wants to do. The great thing about slicing software is you have ultimate control over how the quality and style and look and feel of your end print are. You can rotate the part, you can change what side it prints on, you can control the speed, you can control lots and lots of things. It gives you total control over the entirety of the print. It's like a superpower. The most important thing here is not to play with the settings right out of the gate. You can do that later. I recommend just staying with the defaults, but the most important thing is making sure you have the right materials selected. Most printers are gonna come with what's called PLA filament. Uh, it's a really simple, easy to print filament that's reliable, inexpensive, and doesn't have a lot of the danger markers that some other ones have. Uh, but you're gonna to need to make sure that you do it because otherwise you're gonna get wrong temperatures, which is gonna cause a whole bunch of issues. So make sure in your slicing software that you're using the correct material for your printer. I personally use an open source software called Orca Slicer as my main slicing software for my printers. It supports a wide variety of printers, but you may not have that option, or you may have a printer that requires that you use proprietary information. If you do, use a slicing software suggested by your manufacturer, and if it doesn't, or it supports something called G-Code, which is that language that the computer changes over for the printer to be able to speak, um, you can use Orca Slicer. My suggestion would be to use the slicer that comes with your printer. Uh, it should be in the documentation. It may be on a USB stick or maybe something you have to download. Again, I use Orca Slicer as my default one, but there are hundreds of different types of slicers out there as well uh, that all do very different things. So just take a look and see which one works for you. Uh, and remember that you may be able to change as long as you're not stuck in a proprietary lockdown kind of printer. So we're just about ready to print. We're on step four, and this is probably the most important step. The other one's kind of, you're locked into how everything works. We, we have to build the printer the way it says. We have to use a slicing software and get that, and then the model should already be done for us. But the last one's kind of where we need to make sure we do our due diligence and get everything set up. This comes in two parts. The first one is loading the filament. 
Uh, so you're going to follow your manufacturer's instructions and load the filament. It typically comes on these big rolls uh, that are two uh, pounds or so, and uh, you feed through it. You may have a little sample one that comes with it too to test out your first print. That works as well, uh, but I typically use spools for most of my stuff. Once you have the filament loaded, you need to do a process called leveling. Basically, a 3D printer bed has some bend to it, and we need to make sure it's as flat as possible so that we can print layer by layer going up. Um, this process is called leveling. A lot of modern printers have auto leveling where you just go into the settings, find the auto level, and it will take care of all the work for you. But if you don't have one of those, you have to level out the entire bed. Typically, there's going to be little wheels underneath the build plate, and you're going to just change those to make sure everything's level. You just grab the extruder head and move it around and kind of just make sure it stays level. I typically like to have about one paper's worth of thickness between the build plate and the extruder. Uh, that seems to have a good setting there. Uh, depending on your printer, you may need to do more or less, but if you're using the auto level, just stick with that and you'll be fine. Now we're ready to print. We've done all four of our steps. We can go ahead and print our file. We have the machine built, we have the plastic loaded, we have the file loaded, we have the bed level. We're gonna print. For your first print, I really suggest staying near your printer for a little while. 3D prints can take a long time, uh, sometimes several minutes, like 10, 15, 20 minutes, all the way up to several hours. It really depends a lot on your machine, your slicer settings, and a lot of other things that we'll get to down the road. But for your first print, you just wanna make sure you stay there for the first, I would say 15, 20 minutes of the print, just to make sure that it's working properly and everything stays stuck to the build plate. By far the number one most common issue that people have when they're new to 3D printing is that the print will separate off of the build plate and then the printer doesn't have anything solid to print to. So you get this thing called spaghetti. Uh, it happens to all of us, it's something that happens there, but you just wanna make sure that you're watching your printer so that if that does happen, you can stop the print and go back and check and see if everything's proper. When I have a print that fails, I look at three main things. The first one is, is the filament feeding in properly? Um, depending on the age of your filament, the style of filament, it may just be an issue with the filament. So if you have more, try something else out different if you keep having issues with the same color and style of filament. The second thing I check is my slicer settings to make sure that I have the proper material, speeds, all that stuff. Again, if I'm having problems and I change something, I'm just gonna go back to one of the default profiles and generally that fixes most of the problems that I run into. And then third and final, and I do this on every single print, is I level the beds out on every single print no matter what. Uh, even a slightly out of level bed can cause major issues. If you have a bed that's kind of tilted and this thing thinks it's flat and it comes in, it's gonna run into that and it's gonna cause potentially catastrophic damage to your printer. So you wanna make sure you avoid that, and that's again why I suggest sticking around for the first 15, 20 minutes of your print, especially in the first one when you're learning out what's going on. All right, and that should be all the steps you need to get started. There's a ton to go over with 3D printing. This is not an exhaustive list by any means. There's exceptions and changes and rules and all the things that need to be done. But as far as getting started with, I think these four steps are pretty standard across most machines. Get the thing built, load in a model, slice up that model, and then level your bed, load the filament, and print it out. I think that's pretty simple, uh, but if you're running into any problems, let me know. I'd be happy to assist in any way I can, and I wish you the best of luck with printing. Stay tuned for more, because I'll have lots more 3D printed videos coming out soon. Thanks so much for running. Bye-bye.